So when, when they did migrate, where did, what locations did they end up in? The Loyalist migrants overwhelmingly resettled in different parts of the British Empire around the Atlantic. And that was primarily for reasons of proximity. Mm -hmm and it was also for reasons of relative familiarity. So there were really two huge directions in which loyalists went. One of them was to the north, to the provinces of Canada, in particular Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. These were areas that were, of course, geographically uh, contiguous to New England, New York State, uh, and they were uh, tied to those regions in, in all kinds of ways, culturally and, and climatically and so on. And so many loyalists ended up going to those provinces, so many, in fact, that the whole kind of nature of government in Canada uh, was reshaped to accommodate them. Another big movement of loyalists that went to the south, and this concerned people um, mostly coming from the southern colonies who had been, in some cases, slave owners or involved in plantation communities. And these people wanted mostly to try to go to other parts of the British Empire where they could also have similar kinds of lives, in particular where they could have lives where they would still own and use slaves. And so these loyalists tended to go to the British Caribbean, to Jamaica, which was at the time the most uh, prosperous colony in the British Empire, uh, and also to the Bahamas, which are not technically in the Caribbean, but are, of course, warm islands down in the <laughs> seas uh, uh, off of Florida, and were places that had a lot of available land at the time, they weren't heavily settled, and where loyalists were encouraged to resettle with their slaves. So those are the two major places that loyalists go, but I want to highlight two others. One is, of course, Britain itself. And I think a lot of the time when people think about loyalists, they think, oh, well, they were basically English, and of course they would just go back to England. Which is what I thought before I read your book. You're not alone. <laughs> Many people think this. And yet most loyalists were, like most Americans, people who had never been to England. They were people who were born in the now United States. They were people who had never been to England in their lives in many cases. And so some of them did go to England. Uh, some of those who went to England in particular were ones who went very early in the war, ones who had closer ties to England, ones who had more money because England was an expensive place to go. Uh, but for most of those people who went to England, uh, and it was a limited number, it wasn't going back to England, it was going to England for the first time. And they found it to be just as foreign a place as most Americans would find today. I mean, they speak English and there are certain kinds of affinities, but it is a foreign country. The second other place that I'd like to mention that loyalists go brings us back to uh, the figure of David George, whom I mentioned earlier. The black loyalists, as these former slaves were called, faced a particular set of issues as they left the now United States. And that was that, of course, they had been raised in slavery and they were now in a position of freedom. But they were in a position of freedom in a world in which slavery was still quite widespread. Slavery was still practiced, of course, in uh, Jamaica, among other places. Uh, slavery had only very, very recently become uh, kind of technically illegal in England itself. So these are people who have recently arrived into freedom in societies that are not used to having large numbers of free blacks. And they uh, go in the first instance to Canada, but they find that their life there is rather difficult. Uh, it's strange, it's cold, it's very unfamiliar to them. Uh, the people that they live amongst, the whites among whom they live, uh, are not very interested in extending to them different kinds of privileges. And it's for that reason that in 1791, a group of 1,200 black loyalists, including and led by David George, end up going to yet a different place in the Loyalist diaspora. And that place is the country of Sierra Leone on the west coast of Africa. And with the support of a group of British abolitionists, this cluster of black Loyalists crosses the Atlantic from Canada to found, to settle, the city of Freetown, Sierra Leone. And Freetown takes its name from the freedom that they implanted there, Freetown. It was their Freetown founded by or settled by black loyalists. 